We are joined by longtime friend of the show, columnist at johnconzano.com, host of The Bald Face Truth, the one and only John Canzano. Appreciate you joining us, man. Yeah, of course. I mean, big week, uh, you know, uh, a lot of uh, Thanksgiving talks, a lot of, a lot of Civil War talk and uh, Act 2. All, we got a lot to talk about. <laughs> all right, man, let's set the table. We have to start with the 127th matchup between the Beavers and the Ducks. What makes this year's rivalry game so special, John? Well, I think there's a lot of emotion that's obviously going to be part of this game. And and from the Oregon State standpoint, the Beavers fans are all coming into this game going, look, um, you know, they'd love nothing more than to do what Oregon State did last year, spoil Oregon's season, knock them out of the Pac-12 championship game, uh, prove that, that they can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Oregon. Meanwhile, on the other side, you've got Dan Landing in Oregon. Uh, they haven't won a rivalry game in his in his tenure. They have not beat Washington. They have not beat Oregon State. Here comes another opportunity. Huge stage. A lot of stakes. I love that both of these programs are good, but this is a game with major implications, both with this season and just the overall arc and the trajectory of the of the rivalry. I mean, we're talking about 127 meetings between these teams, you know, and, and a lot of history and a lot of wonderful stories, but there's going to be high emotion on Friday at Austin stadium for sure. All right, John, what are you watching for? Well, I think if you are, uh, if you're going to handicap this game, you have to look at, everyone likes to talk about Bo Nix. Everyone likes to talk about Oregon state's quarterback, DJ Uyengalele, but look at the offensive lines of both of these teams. This is going to be a physical football game. Oregon gets this, uh, gets this um, stereotype that it's a finesse team. It's not. And this started a couple years ago with Mario Cristobal. And Jonathan Smith, there's no doubt that Oregon State's bread and butter is running the football first. So I'm going to be looking for the, which way the piles are falling early in this game. Pay attention to that. Because Oregon State last year in the fourth quarter absolutely dominated the line of scrimmage. But they didn't just do it in the fourth quarter. That started earlier in the game when Oregon State was bloodying up Oregon a little bit. So pay attention to the piles and which way they're leaning early in the game. This will be a very physical game. As much as we like to talk about the quarterbacks and the receivers and the ball being in the air, uh, Oregon's got to run the football effectively or they become one-dimensional. And Oregon State absolutely has to run the ball. That is what they do. That is their identity. So whichever one of these teams can effectively run the ball will control the line of scrimmage, of course. Love it. Great keys to the game there, John. And I always want to look ahead. You always talk about looking ahead. And while well, the Ducks, they released their 2024 schedule and the Beavers weren't on it for the first time since World War II, you believe that they'll find a way to play next year? Yeah, here's what I, I'm told that the talks are ongoing. Oregon is really efforting to try to get Oregon State on the schedule in 2024. The weekend that they have circled on the calendar is September 14th. The Ducks are currently scheduled to play Boise State at home on the September 14th of 2024. They would love to swap out Boise State for Oregon State, continue the rivalry series. They also want to go to Oregon State in 2025. And, you know, they're, they're negotiating with Boise State, whether that's going to be, hey, Boise State will play you in a future series, home and home, or just buying out of the game. That's to be determined. I know on Monday and Tuesday, both of those schools were talking. They continue to have discussions. Boise State is the key. There are also there are a lot of moving parts here. But for Oregon State fans who say, I don't want to play the Ducks anymore, you're going to have to get over that. You're, you know, to get a power four opponent to come to Reeser Stadium is going to be very difficult especially the way that this program has, has played in recent years. So there's a benefit to Oregon State getting an Oregon home game. You're talking about a sellout at Research Stadium. You're talking about controlling the media rights for your home games. Oregon State can turn around and sell that game to ABC or, or uh, ESPN or Fox. Um, and then uh, from Oregon's standpoint, it makes a lot of sense to play this series as well, not just because there are a lot of intangible benefits and because we want to see it, but because the Ducks have very few opponents that they can just get on a bus and bus over and play a football game or not have to pay somebody three hundred dollars to $700,000 to come to them. Uh, you look at what Boise State is going to be paid to go to Oregon, it's $800,000 to go play that game. The Ducks wouldn't have to pay Oregon State that. They could just go, hey, home and home series will alternate. I think there's a lot of pressure on these two entities to get this done, especially since the Apple Cup announced a five-year series that will continue. And, I, and I, I think they wanted to announce it, Orlando, in front of Friday's uh, Civil War matchup. 
Uh, I don't know if that's still going to happen, but I know they're efforting and they're working hard to get this done. I expect that they're going to play each other. I would be surprised if they did not. Love it. I, I know a lot of people are interested in that. We all want to know what is going to happen. It'd be a shame if they didn't continue this rivalry. I want to switch gears here. You went one-on-one -on -one with Beavers head coach Jonathan Smith this week on your statewide radio show, and it made headlines. What do he tell you, and what do you think about Jonathan Smith's future at Oregon State? Well, I think he's asking himself the question that I think recruits and players and fans at Oregon State are asking, what's going to happen in 2024? Now, I'm told that Scott Barnes, the athletic director, has been in constant contact with his football coach. He is showing him and telling him what Oregon State plans to do. They plan to fund Oregon State like it's a Power 5 school. They want to play a good schedule. They want to be a team that can get an at-large berth into the expanded playoff. They're saying all the right things, but there's some elements here that are outside the control of Oregon State. Frankly, if Jonathan Smith wants to be at a Power 5 conference school or a Power 4 conference school, there's going to be opportunities for him. Now, I was not surprised that he was candid and authentic with me. We went one-on-one. -on -one. I asked him, you know, point blank, you know, have you or your agent had contact? And he said, my agent best be out there talking to people. It's his job. He says, you know, I'm paying a percentage of what I make to go out and do these kinds of things. I thought it was really refreshing to have a coach talk in that way. I also, though, came away thinking, you know, he's probably gone. He's probably going to explore an opportunity if, if, if it's a good opportunity. I don't think he'll jump for just any job. And so ask yourself, you know, is a Michigan State job a better job than Oregon State for a year or two? Is Texas A&M a better job for a year or two? Now, if you're a Beaver fan and the job at Washington or USC opens up or UCLA, look out because I think they would train their focus on Jonathan Smith. And those are really good jobs for a guy who's been successful on the West Coast in the Pacific time zone. But right now, you know, I'm just kind of evaluating where Jonathan Smith is. I think he's going to evaluate. He's got a great deal at Oregon State. I'm not sure what more they can do except say to him, hey, we'll pay your assistant coaches a little more. But if you're an Oregon State fan, you know, I think if a better job comes available, if a no-brainer is out there, I think Jonathan Smith is gone. If a no-brainer doesn't develop, I think you have a chance to keep him for a season or two while you figure things out. Great interview, great conversation. You can catch John Canzano's work at johnconzano.com. I have one more question for you, John. Yeah. It's one of the big stories with the Oregon Ducks now. Is Bo Nix the Heisman frontrunner? Well, I think he is, and I have a Heisman ballot. So, like, on my ballot, if I had to fill it out today, Bo Nix is going to be one of the three names that I write in on my ballot. But there's, you know, there's all this enthusiasm in the last week or so for Jaden Daniels at LSU. And he's, got, he's having a prolific offensive year for a team that has a great offense. And, I, and on paper, his numbers are outstanding. But I look back at this season, and I want to talk a little bit about Bo Nix and Michael Penix Jr. First of all, Michael Penix Jr. is undefeated. LSU and Jaden Daniels, they're sitting on multiple losses, three losses. How can a team with that kind of season uh, you know, push forth its quarterback and say, okay, you know, he's been in a lot of games, he's played in fourth quarters of a lot of games, look at all of his numbers. Well, you got Penix sitting on the sideline late in games because – Washington's undefeated. Same goes for Bo Nix, probably worse. You know, Bo Nix, you know, there were games in the early part of the season that, you know, he was out pretty much in the third quarter and didn't come back into the football game. Now, Oregon's gone pedal to the metal marketing Bo Nix. Uh, you know, he has six touchdown passes in the first half against Arizona State last week. I think they're doing everything they possibly can. I know Bo Nix is going to be a finalist. I just don't know, Orlando, if Bo Nix or Michael Penix Jr. can get to Las Vegas play each other head-to-head, -head, have a terrific game. The whole country is going to get a chance to watch that while Jaden Daniels at LSU is sitting home because LSU is nowhere near the SEC title game. So I think it's a real opportunity on December 1st in Vegas. The ballots are not due until December 4th, and I think that's important. On December 1st in Vegas, if Washington wins, and Michael Penix Jr. is the reason that Washington wins that game, how do you keep him off the top of your ballot? You know, sitting at 13-0. and 0. And if Oregon wins that game and avenges the loss and Bo Nix is the reason Oregon wins that game, how do you keep Bo Nix off your ballot? I mean, I feel like I'm, I'm just talking common sense here. Like those two guys to me are one and two. Jaden Daniels, great year, great numbers. But you can't put a quarterback who has lost multiple games 
and not really played at the level that these two guys are playing at in the toughest conference in the country. Uh, he's not in front of the, either one of those players. Oh, just fantastic, John. Thank you so much for giving me a few minutes of your time. Hopefully we can run this thing back in another week or two when maybe the dust settles and we have a little more insight into what in the world is going on. But for now, it sets up for a beautiful rivalry game and so many other stories to, to rock with. So, John, I appreciate you. You can catch his work on johnconzano.com.